reconstitution and installation of talc slurry will need to be performed with an aseptic technique. An assistant will be required for this procedure. Before the procedure, verify that patient consent has been obtained. Junior residents or medical officers administering talc for the first time will need to be supervised by a senior doctor. Step 1. Position the patient comfortably, with adequate space and easy access to the installation site. Step 2. Prepare the equipment for talc reconstitution and administration. You will need to prepare two Lua Lock 50ml syringes, a 16-gauge needle, a syringe with 1% lignocaine, a 20ml syringe with sterile saline and sterile drapes. In addition, you will need to put on sterile gloves, an apron, and a cap during the preparation and installation of intrapleural medications. For large bore chest drains, where a three-way stopcock is not available, chest drain clamps and additional catheter tip 50 ml syringes will be required. For this video, we will be demonstrating talc installation via a three-way stopcock. Step 3. Clean the access site before installation of intrapleural lignocaine. Clean around the access port using an alcohol-based solution, being careful not to contaminate your gloves during the process. Place sterile drapes around the area as required. For this video, a three-way stopcock with a one-bar valve is used, as shown in the diagram on the left. For this configuration, the direction that the valve is pointing towards is off. Always turn the stopcock valve or clamp off to the patient, as shown on the diagram to the left, before removing the protective cover of the access port. This is to prevent inadvertent entry of air into the pleural space. After the syringe containing saline or medications to be instilled is connected to the access port, turn the clamp off to the underwater seal drainage system, as shown on the right. This will allow you to instill saline or medications into the pleural space. Remember to turn the clamp off to the patient before removing the syringe. For large bore chest drains with no three-way stopcock available, you will need to clamp the chest drain proximally, in other words, nearer to the patient before disconnecting the tube and attaching the catheter tip syringe. The clamp can be removed once the syringe is connected securely and medications can then be instilled. You are now ready to instill intrapleural lignocaine. Ideally, lignocaine should be instilled at least 3 to 5 minutes before talc is administered. Turn the three-way stopcock valve off to the patient. Remove the protective cover of the access port and clean the exposed port using an alcohol-based solution. Connect the syringe containing sterile saline. Turn the stopcock valve off to the underwater seal drainage system and flush with saline to ensure drain patency. Check for leakage around the tube during flushing. Turn the stopcock valve off to the patient before removing the syringe. Next, instill 1% lignocaine into the pleural space. In this demonstration, 10 milliliters is being administered. However, take note that the recommended dose for intrapleural lignocaine is 3 mg per kilogram of body weight, up to a maximum of 250 mg. Again, turn the stopcock valve off to the patient before removing the syringe. Flush the chest drain with sterile saline. Clamp the drain and replace the protective cover of the access port. Step 4. Talc reconstitution. With the help of an assistant, carefully remove the talc bottle from its sterile packaging. Clarify the dose of talc to be administered to avoid errors during reconstitution and installation of talc slurry. In this video, we will be preparing 4 grams of talc slurry. Remove the cap of the talc vial. You may vent or remove air from the vial using a syringe to allow for easier reconstitution later on.
slowly inject 50 milliliters of sterile saline into the vial. You will encounter resistance due to buildup of pressure. To release this pressure, you may intermittently vent or remove air from the vial before injecting more saline. Do this by releasing pressure on the syringe or pulling on the plunger to remove air. This should facilitate injection of the remaining saline into the talc vial. This vial contains 4 grams of talc, giving us a concentration of 4 grams per 50 milliliters of talc slurry. After injection of saline, swirl the vial to disperse the talc powder evenly. Next, aspirate the contents back into the 50 milliliters syringe. You may introduce some air into the vial to facilitate this. Aspirate 25 milliliters of talc slurry into each of the 50 milliliters syringes. Further dilute each syringe with 25 milliliters of sterile saline. This will give you a final concentration of 2 grams of talc in 50 milliliters of slurry in each syringe. Gently agitate the solution to disperse the talc evenly. You may draw some additional air into the syringe to facilitate mixing, but remember to remove the air from each syringe before talc installation. Talc slurry should be used immediately after preparation, otherwise, it should be stored in a refrigerator and discarded, if not used, within 12 hours. Step 5. Installation of Talc Slurry just prior to installation, if you see any settling or precipitation of talc powder, you may agitate the solution again to redisperse the talc. Remove air from the syringe and slowly instill talc slurry into the pleural space. Remember to turn the stopcock valve off to the patient before removing the protective cover of the access port. Turn the stopcock valve off to the underwater seal drainage system and proceed to instill talc slurry. A common dose for talc pleurodesis is 4 grams of talc. For this dose, you will instill 100 milliliters of talc slurry prepared in a concentration of 2 grams per 50 milliliters in each syringe. Turn the stopcock valve off to the patient before removing the syringe. Finally, Flush with 10 milliliters of sterile saline to ensure complete installation of talc slurry. Turn the stopcock valve off to the patient to clamp the chest drain and replace the protective cover of the access port. Step 6. Post-procedural instructions. After the drain has been clamped for 1 to 2 hours, unclamp the drain and apply continuous external suction overnight. Ensure that the patient is prescribed regular or standby analgesia.